Well, if you prescribe to the theory of Vince McMahon that what matters most is getting a reaction, whether it is an overwhelmingly positive reaction, a negative reaction, or a split reaction, that's what professional wrestling sports entertainment by God is all about today. You're in the reaction business. And as long as you can emote the people enough to give you a reaction, you got something. Then AEW has to declare a major victory this week because the single hottest topic since Dynamite on Wednesday has to be Marco Stunt. This 23-year-old, 5'2", 100-pound soaking wet dude has become the lightning rod of discussion and conversation. I won't say controversy because I don't think he inherently did anything that controversial, but for some, just the mere thought of him being in a wrestling ring being featured on national cable television is controversial. And man, oh man, the reactions to this have been strong, vociferous, on both sides of the fence. Whether you're the AEW shills, and you are defending this to the hilt, and coming up with ridiculous comparisons and out-of-context points to try and defend Marco Stunt's presence on national television for a major wrestling company, or you're those that just want to automatically dismiss the dude because he's five foot two and 105 whatever the hell pounds, and you think it's ridiculous and a joke. Man, there is no middle ground, it feels like. It feels like everybody is all the way one way or all the way the other. And as much as I usually try to believe that I am in many ways, a voice of necessary grounding and necessary kind of um, balance and logic in this professional wrestling world. I really truly feel that way in this particular circumstance because there is a happy medium here. And first, let me address these AEW bots, these AEW shills, led by their cuck commander, Dave Meltzer, comparing a 23-year-old 5'2 Marco Stunt to a 17-year-old 1991 Rey Mysterio is stupid, ludicrous, and ridiculous and needs to fucking stop. It needs to stop! And in general... The whole comparison of Marco Stunt to Rey Mysterio is just ridiculous on so many different levels. Number one, Rey Mysterio bigger. Even back in the 90s, he was bigger than Marco Stunt is now. And especially later on in his career when Rey Mysterio got kind of gassed up. Yeah, he didn't have height, but at least he looked like a goddamn professional wrestler. He looked like he gave a shit about his body. Marco Stunt clearly does not. Number two, Rey Mysterio had the freaking mask, which you can make a ton of money off of in terms of merchandise. You can't do that with Marco Stunt. And yes, that makes a difference. Number three, Rey Mysterio was a character. He was a performer. Marco Stunt is just one of many other guys in wrestling. They can do moves and flips and all this other stuff, and that seems great in theory until you realize, again, part of the problem is, is every single damn body can. So what makes him so different? Number four, when Rey Mysterio was coming up through the ranks over the years until he eventually became a World Heavyweight Championship main event type guy in WWE, he was wrestling as a cruiserweight. So he was wrestling guys that were similar in size to him at a time where you still had 250, 300, 350, 400 pound main eventers consistently in WWE. And before that in WCW. Now the problem is with a company like AEW, most everybody is a damn cruiserweight. These are major key distinctions that must be made. They must. So a Rey Mysterio stands out more in his time than a Marco Stunt 
does in his. This is not a hard concept to grasp, and yet I see so many people getting so emotional about, oh my god, just because the guy is small doesn't mean that you can't be somebody in permission to rest and did, 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 did. And I don't necessarily fundamentally disagree with that basic premise. But what so many people are using here as defense mechanisms to try and justify Marco Stunt's position is just patternly, predictably pathetic. Pathetic. Pathetic! If you're going to make arguments, make better ones. If you're going to try and defend something, A, if you have to go this far and this out of whack in order to try and defend it, maybe you're making the point of the other side already. Number two, at least make sure your points are valid and at least make sure your points have some level of proper context to them. Because all this shit I'm hearing about Rey Mysterio doesn't make any goddamn sense. And if anything, if we're being completely honest here, number five, another really big thing that Rey Mysterio had going for him, especially for a U.S.-based company like WWE, as you were talking about being an international brand at the same time, Rey Mysterio is fucking Mexican! So you didn't have a ton of guys like him, whereas Marco Stump looks like a five-foot-two cross-dresser type of dude. With the long hair. I mean, he looks like a girl sometimes from a certain angle. But well, what's he going to appeal to? Whereas you can intentionally, strategically position Rey Mysterio to appeal to segments of fan bases all around the world. Can't do that with Marco. A better, more appropriate comparison for a Marco stunt might be a Spike Dudley type of guy. A type of guy that you loop him in with groups and you give him a gimmick and he goes out there and he gets beat the hell up and over a period of time he gets over. Comparing him to fucking Ray or Jusha Thunder Liger. As soon as you say that, then everything else you've said is completely invalid. Which, of course, when we're talking about Dave Meltzer and so many of the other talks when it comes to AEW... It usually is completely invalid. Now, as far as the other side of the fence, I'm sure led by uh, Captain Charisma himself, Jim Cornette, and so many others talking about Marco Stunt is a joke, and Marco Stunt is this, and Marco Stunt doesn't have a place in professional wrestling. Get over your fucking cells. If we want to really go back that far back in the day, you used to have midgets. Excuse me. The vertically challenged. Dwarfs, whatever they have. And they were a thing. And you had them for amusement. You had them for relief. You had them for entertainment. But they still had a place. In theory, in professional wrestling, everybody could have a place. If they could do enough things and they could bring enough to the table, it shouldn't matter whether somebody is 7 foot 500 pounds or 5 foot 100 and nothing. You know, you can't just sit there and say automatically that size alone is disqualifying. Because if we're being completely honest, while yes, I believe size is just one of many components that is lacking in professional wrestling, that has hurt professional wrestling, it is a very small component. If these wrestlers in the business today were better at being characters and performers instead of crash test dummies and spot monkeys and they knew how to work the mic and they actually knew how to work a goddamn crowd instead of just going for the instant cheap thrill I'm going to masturbate in three minutes types of moves. If these guys knew how to tell stories, if wrestling itself knew how to better book stories, you could compensate quite a bit for the lack of size. Size is nice to have in professional wrestling. It's just like sex. Sure, you love to have a 10-inch cock, but if it's halfway soft and you don't know what the hell you're doing with it, then it's just a big old twig flopping around and you're not going to do anything. You can be a firm six to six and a half, seven inches, and know how to go side to side and up and down and back and forth. You have rhythm and have timing, have setup and execution, and it'll be much better for all parties involved. So this whole notion that Marco Stunt in no way, shape, or form has any place in professional wrestling to me is just a complete farce. Now, yes, I would agree that 
If you're going to be there and you're going to be five foot two and you're going to be a hundred something pounds, then you need to hit the fucking gym and actually look like you give a shit. I think that's a fair point to make. But where he should be focusing on is being some type of character, some type of personality. I do not know if the guy can talk on the mic or not. I will say this, considering we're talking about today's professional wrestling, it's probably very safe to say, like 90 plus percent of the damn wrestlers, he can't cut a damn promo to save his effing life. These types of dudes, you can do things with, though. You can go out there and have them be sacrificial lambs. If you want to go the pathetically predictable underdog route, and you want to sit there and have them get their asses kicked, and I'm the underdog, and nobody ever believes in me. Some of the kids might like them. Some of the women might feel sorry for them and kind of appeal to them. And a lot of the guys that watch wrestling, the neckbeard nerds, and we're never athletic enough to play any type of sport at a decently high level, even in the middle school or high school level. We'll gravitate to him and see, like, he can do it, so can I, my dog. No, no. You can do something with that. Or you can make him some type of smarmy type of character. And you can have him be your intergender wrestling champion. You know, but if you're going to go down like that Andy Kaufman type of route, he actually has to have comedic timing, and he has to understand what it's like to be a heel and embrace being a heel and seek out heat, be a heat-seeking missile, if you will, and be able to work it and own it and run shit, which I highly doubt Marco Stone is going to be able to do. But you could also potentially take an element of him and have him be like this smarmy little slimy shit that says icky things to women and inappropriate things to women, thinks much bigger than himself than he really fucking is, but at the same point in time, he has some big 300, 400-pound monster behind him, so Marco Stunt lets his mouth do the talking, and he lets somebody else cash the damn checks. Now, you kind of almost have that component a little bit with the fucking Luchasaurus, but of course, because the wrestling gods hate me, we gotta go a few months without the fucking Luchasaurus! But... Marco Stunt, if he had the ability to talk, if he had the ability to draw heat, if he had the ability to be a real character, not just a crash test dummy, you can make him a manager, you can make him an interviewer, you can make him a commentator, you can make him part of a group, as I've described already. A guy like Marco Stunt, being in the business in and of itself, does not fundamentally bother me. What fundamentally bothers me is when people come up with ridiculously dumb dick poorly driven kind of comparisons with like Rey Mysterio and Jushin Thunder Liger and those are just stupid and those need to stop. Spike Dudley could be something. But Spike Dudley knew how to be a character. Spike Dudley knew how to be a performer. So even when he was a crash test dummy at times, he made his shit count. It wasn't just doing it for the sake of freaking doing it. And you had him associated with the Dudleys and, you know, even then it's still different. But what he can't be doing is sitting there and wrestling competitive matches against the Lucha Brothers, who even though them themselves are not giants, compared to Marco, they look like monsters. You have to understand how to do shit. And having him wrestle through the commercial and having Marco do all this competitive shit is not helping him, it's not helping them, it's not helping any fucking body. That I will totally, completely agree with. So for those I want to sit there and pretend like he's the Ray, next Rey Mysterio or Jushin Thunder Liger, fuck you. You're an idiot. Stop it. Just stop it. And for those that say he has absolutely low, no place, get real. Get real. He has a place. It should never be touching the main event or a world title. Oh, no, 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 no. But you could, you could do something with a guy like this. He might not be a ton. He might just always be a role player. But not everybody can be a superstar. And at this point in time, frankly, in professional wrestling, we could use solid, capable damn guys and just solid, capable fucking role players. Because you hardly got any of them. I totally get why so many people were pissed off about what was going on in the match on Wednesday night. Because it was stupid. It was stupid, stupid, stupid. And I don't care what a Chris Jericho says or a Jim Ross says. They're full of shit, too. But it doesn't mean that the guy doesn't have a place. Even if it's at the kiddie table of professional wrestling. I'm just saying.